Kyle here with Panelist Podcast Dimitri and Paneloids Podcast Pierre. That's right. Paneloids in our first names now. Let's start with the Guardians of the Galaxy because we got a trailer and we got a holiday special. I know somebody fell asleep. I saw the great musical number they did in the beginning. Mm, okay. That was pretty cool. Okay. I saw Kevin Bacon for one scene. That's about it. Pierre, did you actually watch the Guardians holiday special on like? I Disney? did. I was a big fan of it. I thought it was a very well done little cute movie. Got me into the mood for Christmas. Actually, it's my kickoff for Christmas movies. Yeah, nothing too much out of that. I like Groot bulky now. He has boulders for a body now. So I thought the reason he changed his stature so much was because they just made a suit and it was like a practical thing that he was just in like a Chewbacca kind of suit, right? It's not. It's all CGI. Uh, oh. Like, completely. I really thought it was the guy in a suit, and that was the only reason it explained his weird body shape. I don't hate mm. it, though. I don't hate the weird body shape. So, for the longest, up until now, I thought that that Groot was still the same original Groot. No, no, no. He did. I googled it. It's Groot's son. Like He's gonna seed. grow up completely different. Yeah. You'd think I'd put that together. It's like a tree. You have a seed, and you keep it moving. But no, I but just Who fertilized him, is what I want to know. Oh. Himself. Let's not get canceled now. Kevin Bacon was great. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bacon was great. I didn't need the singing, the little singing number that he did. I didn't understand the song. I like the intro song. That was yeah, good. Yeah. I like that a lot, actually. But the Kevin Bacon song, I was just like, oh. I didn't know he sang. I didn't no, like the front fun. man alien, though. He kind of looked like a scrotum, not like a good scrotum. Yeah. Like an unhealthy I mean, scrotum. I mean, I think those were actual people. I think that's an actual band. I think I so, too. Assuming. Yeah, right? I Has think so, to too. Yeah. yeah. I think they say the name of the band in the beginning because mm. I got that far, but I don't remember the name of the band. I mean, do I care enough to research more? Absolutely not. But it was a great way to start. Yeah, I think it was a good segue into like kind of what the Guardians have been up to, where they're at. I think something not important, but I guess seeing that Quill and Gamora are still not together, so he's still kind of like bummed out and out of his kind of element. He's mm -hmm. in his head about not having Gamora around. I mean, it'll be cool to see that, which we did see a little tease of where she's at in the trailer. What'd you think of the cartoonish flashback? Didn't love it. They actually brought the actors in and like put them in costume and then did some kind of old fashioned style to them oh, to really? capture their emotion and then make a cartoon. And I was like, oh, wow, like that's really like an extra step for something that no one really is going to like. <laughs> like I thought you went it, overboard. <laughs> it felt like a Christmas story. You know, like it really I felt like, was like a point. Polar Express type of like vibe. Yeah, you know, was, I get that. Yeah, you're right. It was unneeded because like you said, that whole thing that they did seems like it was a lot of work for little two scenes that are tiny. To be fair, it's not like they were hard to get. The Guardians yeah. trailer. Not the holiday special, but the trailer for volume Perfect. three. Which Dimitri didn't fall asleep through. I saw it. I thought it was whatever because they had their funny moment where they go to the planet and uh, Drax throws a ball at the alien child mm -hmm. and all that was, that was fun. That was good. I like that. How do I put this nicely? I don't know if they're utilizing Gamora well enough. I feel like it's all in the background and she won't get much screen time. I think you're right. I don't know what they're doing with her, what they're setting up. They're setting something I, more up with that. There has to be next to nothing. Yeah, who are they going to kill? They're clearly making it look like Rocket and that's what everyone's saying, but I really believe it's going to be Tracks. Yeah, I think I it's a twist. Think he wants out. They're mind fucking us into believing that it's it's Rocket. They're not killing mm -hmm. Rocket off. Not only does he want out, I think he wants DC. Probably. Yeah. We know he wants Gears of War. He would be yeah. awesome oh, yeah. in that. He's like made for that role. He's not gonna keep doing this without James Gunn. And James Gunn is running DC. He's done with Marvel. So there's no All way. The makeup and shit. Yeah. He's gonna go through hell for something mediocre. Yeah. I mean, they could kill him off. I could see that. And then he gets Bane in DC. That could be too. I know that. wants Bane. I can't see him as Bane. It would be Same. too similar to what we've already had. They need to do CGI Bane. Full brolic Bane. I think he would make a great Mr. Freeze. Hmm. That's interesting. I think I he could pull it. it off. I don't hate that. I mean, he yeah, would have to get back into makeup, but they'll do it differently, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't think he necessarily hates that, but I could see Drax being the one that goes. Nebula looked like she was getting pummeled by Adam. So Adam Warlock, we finally got our first glimpse of what he looked like. No, I'm not too crazy about it. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, Same. A lot of gold, but I guess I, I didn't know what else, like why I wouldn't expect that, you know? And why is there a stone in his head? Him having that might mean that the Infinity Stones are back or where, you know, maybe he's from somewhere else or whatever it is, because obviously we know that there's different timelines and that 
whole situation is happening right now. Yeah, I don't think it's any of that. I think it's just aesthetic, and they didn't want to change the character too much, and possibly they made him nope. too gold, and that's the problem. Nope, you're wrong. I'm putting <clears throat> money on it. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised if they keep Rocket alive. It's because I messed up, but there's no reason for any of the other characters. The Mantis actress, who I don't know her name, she stated, everyone's acting like this is the end of Guardians. She said, it's not the end, per se. It's just whatever's next is going to be drastically different. Yeah, it's a transformation. I can definitely see that, yeah. for sure. We're just going to have a new team, and there'll be a few stragglers left. Mm -hmm. Possibly Mantis, because she said that in the interview. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Cosmo, the dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a great little addition, and I felt like it was, like, obviously she was introduced earlier than that, but seeing her in the Christmas special and, like, getting to see her character and what you're going to get from Cos, it's going to be a fun, definitely, addition to the I mean, you think that's carrying Guardian. over? Yeah, 100%. Then maybe Rocket yep. does die, and that's his replacement as a mm -hmm. animal character. I don't see that. <laughs> I think that the conversation between the two of them is too good. Mm, but they were okay. really making Rocket, like, it's going to be an emotional trip for Rocket, I feel like. Who's the otter? I'm not familiar with the otter. So he dates her in the comics. It's his love interest. Though. So that's why it's like, why would they introduce his love interest and then kill him all? Yeah, I'm going to say they don't kill him off and he just yeah. goes off into the sunset and we never see him again. Yeah. Interesting. Or yeah. you see him again, but like in something else. So the other thing that you got out of the trailer, or was it out of the Christmas special? I don't know. They own Nowhere now. What's his name is probably still alive though. The Collector. He's probably alive somewhere doing something, but that's just another little tidbit I'm gathering from it. I think they would retouch that though just to he's a big close character. the trilogy yeah like to wrap it up yeah he's got to be involved yeah. somehow in it yeah so we'll see what happens so yeah where do we think adam is because personally i think adam is misguided right now doesn't know what he's doing and i don't think he's going to be necessarily the big bad in this movie i think he's just going to be the guy that's confused and then they're going to find the big bad and he's going to get flipped and fight them with the uh, Guardian. Well, he's created by the gold people, who I don't recall what their name is, but we know that they don't like the Guardians. Mm -hmm. So it could be something as simple as that, but I think it's going to kind of be what you're saying, that he's misguided, but instead of him getting that redemption story at the end, he's going to get misguided by somebody else. You know, some kind of asshole. But I don't see him just getting flipped to be good, not in this movie. I think James Gunn's going to plant the seed for that to happen somewhere else without him. Good prediction. Dimitri, any thoughts, any predictions? I I think they all need to go. I think they should wrap it up with killing everyone. All of them die. I don't hate it. It's just time. Like, I love the it first Guardians. Bad. What would you do next? Like, you just add more characters from space. Nova? Um, you get his own. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they could but... set up Nova or, you know, leave it off to Nova's going to be the new, like, space-themed thing. But... That's about it. I guess maybe split them up, not necessarily be the Guardians, but be split up into other squads. Like you're saying, oh. Nova would be the space adventure. Maybe they're part of the Nova Corps now or whatever. I don't know what happened in the comics with them, though. I don't know enough of their stories to know where they're going. I think they all died, too. To be fair, the first one, that was kind of the positive of it, like not knowing much about it. And they kind of, you know, filled all the holes and just made mm -hmm. their own world. Like, that was it. Because of that, no one really saw it coming. It ended up being one of the best, whatever phase that was. I think it's going to be a darker path for them going forward because if james gunn is not going to be directing the next one then i think it's they're going to make a more serious tone for them especially since chris hemsworth doesn't want that kind of thor movie anymore wakiti so that'd be actually oh. cool if he took on guardians i wouldn't mind seeing that because guardians no. is like stupid like actually it's tight. no though i don't want anything else from him yeah no he needs to go sit down i feel like he just walked into the room and just took the papers and just threw them into the air and that was how he put it all together and he was I like mean, if it's you... a vision it's magic <laughs> it's art and that was it and it's like no Takiti, if you're hearing this I'm your fan <laughs> I still <laughs> like your movie <laughs> if you want to be fair give him something else not to the scale of Thor why not Guardian you guys want to kill him off and end it so why not just give him Guardian right well, okay other... he can take Guardians but just don't do it like you did Love and Thunder just do the opposite the new rumor that's coming out is that the next phases are going to focus on quality over quantity because they realize they've overdone it which is cool i'm all about quality so when i saw that statement i instantly thought that this is because the employees were all complaining and talking right. shit about the i think they have no the choice environment they were just like all right let's like pull back a little bit because <laughs> these people are quitting on us and we can't have them talking badly about our company i also do feel like you're right like and you just see it you see the quality you see it has 
hasn't been as good. They got a bunch of things out and they're just like, all right, what did we actually get? Then I, I'm definitely on board for that. I think, what was the other thing that came out? Oh, the vision, his TV show. There were a couple of things that they were talking about. You're going to see like the white visions, new path of clarity and trying to find himself. Ultron is apparently supposed to make an appearance in that. Ultron's not supposed to be killable. Yeah. So he's apparently supposed to make an appearance in there. And I'm sure Wonder Man's going to be teased through that. Yeah, that would make sense. Which, how do we feel about the Wonder Man cast? I don't care. I, like I it. thought it was pretty I mean, cool. I think that actor should have gotten a bigger role. I don't know how big the Wonder Man role is going to be in the midst of everything. No, I agree. Definitely on both. I don't mind it. I do feel like he could have been used for a bigger project. But again, Wonder Man was big, you know. I'm surprised that they're pulling him. But I guess he is part of a lot of stories, like, from the past. So that makes sense. To piggyback off of the quality over quantity thing, the movies have taken a hit. I would say every single show was good not great like was good could have been better they all could have been better that has to do with all the cgi all the extra stuff they were trying to throw in so that's enough about that trash let's wow, talk about okay. something very special miles morales spider-man number one by cody ziggler out of 10 Issue number one. What are we giving it? Honestly, I feel weird, like a bias, mm. but I really do feel like it was a 10 out of 10. I almost yeah. want to say 9 out of 10 just because I don't want to seem too biased. Yeah, I can't find anything wrong with it. And if there's nothing wrong with it, it's 10 out of 10. A 10. I think it's 10 out of 10. Pierre? 4 out of 10? Dude, you fucking liar. <laughs> no, no, no. It was great. It was yeah. really well, like, well put together. Yeah, like, you're right, Dimitri. Like, I kind of feel biased, but like, after talking to him and then reading his book, I really feel like he poured himself into this character. Like, I see miles morales and him just kind of turned into like yeah. one little like cool creativity it was great pierre can i call you out for a second mm. oh no have you read any other miles morales ongoing if you say what if i swear yeah the clone saga like where the big dude that just goes Err. okay cody said this <laughs> in our interview <laughs> Yeah, he did. <laughs> the only reason <laughs> that you know of that. All right, so then what? Is he not like this? Is Miles always like this? I don't think so. I think he's highlighting that, like, oh, this is a real struggle. Like, he's growing and he can't manage. I don't want to throw my ideas in on his run when it's the first issue. You're already speculating? I'm already speculating. First of all, the way he is right now, like, yeah, the positive outlook of, like, oh, things are going to get better. I just have to figure it out and, you know, have mm. patience. Mm. But how perfect would a Venom symbiote be? right now in this very moment oh man oh so let's just say spoilers now because i do want to talk about exactly what you're talking about so spoilers but miles got a little aggressive yeah like he had the guy down he ripped his wings off he made him say sorry he got a little tough and it was really fucking cool and then he beat the shit out of him he was like oh shit my bad you're still a criminal <laughs> all right so, so fill me yeah. in. didn't he have a symbiote already at some point during absolute carnage it was short-lived he didn't have much control of it though kind of just like took him over he was part of the mm -hmm. hive mind i don't know how they would make it happen although there was rumor of a big venom event yeah i'm not up to date on ram v's part of venom which would be the part that is eddie he's like in, on a whole nother planet right now like he like popped into a thor story and like dipped out again he is but dylan brock's on earth oh. with half of the symbiote i kind of lost track to be honest see that would make more sense though because how they're pulling like vulture's daughter then you have eddie brock's son miles morales like they're all kind of like young in this yeah. new level you think they're making like a fifth generation young avengers i think so it's not a bad idea like it's I not know. a bad idea like they should do it i can see that that's where the venom would come from though that would make complete sense you think dylan brock just loses it and it goes to miles Who's this girl at the end? That's going to be the villain. Technically a cameo appearance, if we're talking grading terms. Which is annoying. Number two is going to be the first appearance. I've already ordered a variant where she's in costume. I did order a virgin variant from some website that does show her in full costume. It's kind of like a tech kind of costume. I'm just noticing that Midtown sold out of issue one. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. The helmet reminds me a little bit of like Signal, just kind of like that sleek motorcycle helmet, but a little bit of like a bat horn to it. It's actually really cool. It's not like a villain costume. It's a, I'm making shit so I could beat your ass. But again, spoilers, the young woman that Miles saved in the beginning of the issue from Scorpion actually knows his secret identity and wants to fuck him up. 
They don't say why. Nope. My only assumption, which is kind of reaching and there's no indication of it, but what if she's working with someone? What if she's working with like, I don't know, Kingpin or something like that? Well, the Bumblebee villain that got his ass beat, he had upgraded tech. I believe it came from her. Yeah, it probably came from her. She also could be connected to these vigilante police. Maybe they're funding her as their own vigilante to take down superheroes. I think Cody planted the seeds for everything to be connected. He started it on this character, showing she's a good person, and then revealing in the last panel that she's the villain. I would have not guessed that. Looking back, it's like, oh, I should have figured it out, but I didn't guess it at all. You would have right. assumed, like, possible love interest, possible copycat wanting to be like Miles or something to that nature, but right. no, she's tracking him. I think she's going to be a villain that sticks around just from the way he's building her already. I like that the black eye <laughs> made it into the classroom. Yes. I think it's great that he's showing that being late is not the only thing that he has to deal with. There's actual repercussions from getting to fist fights all the time. Yeah. The teacher that was messing with him mm -hmm. gives me heavy Lawrence Fishburne vibes. Mm. Like a younger okay. Lawrence Fishburne. Like if I'm thinking of the movie uh, uh, Boys in the Hood. But like he okay. has that same demeanor, that same like, like pushing him. I like that. I dug that. I thought that was like well placed. I thought that was very intentional i wonder if that was any inspiration she looks okay. kind of like she rides like some sort of like hover discs oh so, really yeah if you look at the picture i didn't catch that i know some covers she more has like a green kind of design to her this one like her helmet's more green yeah yeah look at that it one. right it doesn't yeah. it look like she's sitting on those you know what i'm hoping that Cody does make an effort to explain the costume change because mm. the costume that was made by Chase that I forget the character you know designed it though in the comic but like the artist who did it like I remember it just being such a big deal and a lot of people loved it, a lot of people didn't love it I'm just curious if there's any kind of story of why he went back to his original costume or if it's just time passed when that's just all we're gonna get I didn't finish it but I feel like he goes back to his original no he doesn't really so as I'm saying the way the last ongoing ended he did not go back to the original costume the clone still hanging out like there still was some loose ends i mean there's, again this is only issue one he did mention when we interviewed him that he does have plans for a lot of those things to come back yeah that were already set in place i hate to say it this way but he has to clean it up mm -hmm. it wasn't his story it doesn't work with his story but the correct thing to do is clean it up which i believe he's going to just off the first panel like you said he even mentioned it there that life's been crazy from clones to space yeah i do like his writing style though and I Again, I did read Spider Punk. So reading Spider Punk and then reading this feels the same, but also completely different. I don't know how to explain it, but I can see him oh, yeah. moving on with Miles. So yeah, I do he feel like he's that. writing the character for what the character is supposed to be. I think he has a feel for who everyone sees him as. But I mean, overall, this is like way exceeding expectations. Like I knew it was going to be good just from us talking to Cody. Like you could tell. Yeah. Got to buy a few number ones, I think, right? Yeah, and no, I messaged the shop and I was like, give me at least three of the cover A and everything else you have. Bam. So you we'll got to go pick up that pile because I'm sure he's pissed about <laughs> your pile. So funny right? story. Just talk about that for a second. I emailed him. I said, if Pierre doesn't pick up my books this week, I'll go get them. And he wrote back and he said, I think Pierre's fiance cut him off. I haven't seen him in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw him today and he's like, oh, you're not cut off, right? I was like, no, no, no. He's like, you haven't been on the Whatnot app? Yeah. So, I mean, that was the sickest comic book to come out this week. That's the only thing that was on my radar. And honestly, the reason why I haven't been visiting the comic book shop is because there's nothing that's been on my radar mm -hmm. really lately. And with that release, I was like, damn, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a slow baby. month for sure. Yeah. I'd like to just talk about Gargoyles real quick because I bought that. Yep. I was really excited about that. I was disappointed. Everyone's in a relationship. So if you remember the original 90s, TV show, fun, mm. enjoyable. Everyone was a big fan of it. I'm sure you guys watched it. I don't remember them all being in relationships with each other. Like the gargoyles or the gargoyles are all in relationships, and then whatever his name is. Top gargoyle. He, yeah, the top is in love with a human. Like she's dating him. That might be part of it. But then all of the other gargoyles have love interests with other gargoyles. One found a gargoyle yeah. that was like Japanese. I don't remember that. And they have kids. It's not just their building. I remember it's like they were like a whole species and then a magician screwed their yeah. whole species. But I thought, okay, it was like all them and they all had like New York names. Mm -hmm. But And then there was like a robot, right? I remember the robot. He made an appearance. There were clones. So they made appearances. So that was cool. Japanese gargoyle. They have two kids mm. and they're flying around one has like a punk t-shirt on and he's like my name's not Roxar, it's rocks like he shortens <laughs> his name and then there's like mutants that live underground people that have been rejected and mutants and gargoyle copies and they all live together and the one they're having a baby right now as we speak it's just a lot of relationship going on 
out of 10. Three? I'll give it a four just because, but okay. I don't see myself picking up the second one at all. Did you buy anything else? I also bought Briar. It's issue two. It's pretty good. So I think they're still continuing the whole Sleeping Beauty, fairy tale world type mm. vibe. Oh, kind of like a Skyrim type of world. I'll probably pick up the third. At the beginning of it, I was like, oh, they're losing me. And then they kind of brought me back in. A little bit of action. So I was like, all right, cool. If they introduce like a villain that's hunting her down. But I would pick that up before I pick up Gargoyles too. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to talk about Chainsaw Man, right? Chainsaw Man was cool. The eighth episode. Holy fucking shit. Holy Wait, shit. The ninth, which came out. I saw the ninth, but the eighth episode. That I like, was wild. I like the ninth better. All right. We're going to do a whole episode on this. Panelist podcast. <laughs> Always podcast. So you do that, Demetri. You do Wakanda. I don't know what that is. Just say Wakanda. No, you have to do the thing with the arms. Pierre does that one. And you know what I do? You say, I can do this all day. Panelist podcast. But the Marvel Universe hasn't represented your kind at all. The gingers. Yeah. I bet you the first ginger is going to be a villain. So that's what's going to happen. Panelist podcast. I'm going to find it. And my thing is to always find it and buy it way cheaper than Kyle did. So I'm going to do that. Panelist podcast. For those listening, Pierre just was handed a bowl of spaghetti with a small thing of Parmesan cheese. He's going to sprinkle on and eat while we're recording this. He's doing it so wrong. Oh my God. I didn't think I had to tell him to do it right. He just dumped it on like a savage. Pass break. Pass break.